bench from Reby Depot. We're going to press the fluid flywheel seal into the fluid flywheel flange. Uh, this way you can preload it, and when it rides on the uh, shaft, it seals. But first you apply inside here a small amount of Hollemeyer, and that will do that seal for that. And then when we place this, there's no gasket, you put Hollemeyer. Usually I put it on both sides, just give it a little extra oomph. And then we install this. So first Hollemeyer. Now when you apply this stuff, I usually just, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot. And Hollemeyer, once it's exposed to the air, it starts getting sticky. See, so all the way around it. Okay, you don't have to worry about it drying because it really never dries. And the trick to the seal is you want it to go down straight and even. Now I got some tools for this and make sure it's even. So, hold what you got, let me go find that. When you press these in, obviously you want it to go straight down. Don't pound it in, that will never work. It'll fail in a heartbeat. It's a little crooked here, but as this goes down, and the Hollemeyer helps it slide in, it'll bottom out. That bottoms it out. One seal, pressed. Now what you want to do is inspect right there, you'll see it squeezed out a little bit of Hollemeyer. Right around the edges, that's what you want. So this one's down tight. Now the circlip, or the C-ring, that fits in here, these things come at different sides and also we'll go over here now. All right, so here we have our fluid flywheel flange, our new and these are, uh, these are not NOS, these are new remanufactured one. Special space age rubber, I guess. Here's the spacer. Like I said, when this thing rides, it rides right here on this shaft. And you can see that it's very little clearance. It may be about five, six thousandths all the way around. And that supports this lip to keep it from blowing out. Then you take your lock ring. I'm going to try and do this without having it fly off into the wonder land. Make sure it's seated. Yeah, tilt it up so I can see it. Perfect. Usually I do this on a vise, but when in Rome. That's seated. Okay. Now, we clean this off right here. <clears throat> now for the Hollemeyer, and I mean, this stuff goes a long damn way, but still, I like putting it on both sides. Bro, I get Republican on this, <laughs> instead of being liberal with it. <laughs> now, if you notice, there's six holes here. And there's three extra in the flange. That's so you can drive it out like we did in the previous video. All right. Gently push it on to where the seal catches. Get a little bit down here. And what I do is two alignment bolts before I put the lock tab on. That lined up. Oh yeah. Now, lock plate.
Like I said, there's three other uh, extra holes in here when you take this plate off. Use three 5 16 bolts to uh, press this thing out. And the holes are still, two of them are showing up. Well, actually, all three of them are showing up if you set it right. It's not mandatory. You can actually cover them up, but they don't go all the way through anyway. There is a torque setting for this, but I think it's been lost to the winds in the uh, books because I've never been able to find one. So, 3 8 ratchet, 8 inch uh, length. I mean, you can pretty much feel 35, 40 pounds of torque. But remember, these are coarse thread bolts, so don't over torque it. If you look closely, I can see Hollymeyer squeezing out the edges. So it looks good. Yep, I can see it. This does turn. It's just going to be a lot stiffer now because we got a new seal in it. But it rides. Okay, in the next video, we're going to put a new plug in the bottom. Then we're going to attach our air hose. We're going to pressure test this to 25 psi and lock it down and leave it 24 hours. Uh, you can do it with fluid in, but I prefer to do it with fluid out because if it's going to hold air, it's going to hold the fluid. So, next video we'll show you how we're doing that. Notice, I don't know if everybody's got one of these, but Reby Depot, we remade the tool. And it, you can either get a uh, 15 16 socket on the back, which I could use this, or uh, you can use a crescent wrench. Due to the angle I'm at right now, and it makes it just a whole lot easier and a lot better than using the original tool because they have a tendency these plugs are brass. And uh, <laughs> you want them pretty damn tight, oh. and it just makes it a lot easier. And you can get to it with an extension. And like I said, it's so far since we've been using a new tool, we haven't stripped a uh, brass plug at all. But again, hence, they are brass. They do have a tendency to give it up. And it does just like the old tool, because you do that, it holds the nut. All right, now. Our special tool here, first we're going to set it up. You notice it's two stage regulator. Come on, baby. Now, when I put this on the cell, and it's a lot easier because it doesn't have this recess point. So you just got to kind of, you know, you'll have to make your own tool, but it's a two-stage regulator, and you want to be real careful with the air pressure.
Okay, you can zoom in on that. Secondary right there is showing 25 PSI. You see the gauge? Yeah. All right, now we're going to leave it here. And if it was leaking, it already started dropping. So if it holds for 24 hours, it's perfect. It technically, I think uh, what the, uh, the expert, uh, Mr. F, in the UK told me, something like an hour or two, you can do it. But I've usually held them to 24 hours. And we're just going to let it sit here. You lock down the valve. So you best very carefully input pressure here. You regulate it up to 25 PSI. Do not get too crazy with this thing because it can't do weird stuff. Lock it down. Take your air hose off. This uh, section is done.